Hello dear students and the fellow members of the Fraternity of Medicine and Physiology. In the series of uh, the discussion that we had in the previous videos, we have seen uh, the effects of high and low barometric pressure on the body systems. So we are basically looking at the physiology in the unusual environments, when the body faces unusual environments how the body uh, systems or the physiological systems cope with that. So in that series, the next one is the effect of acceleration or uh, g-forces. We are talking about the gravitational forces. So uh, from now on, we will refer to it as g-forces, uh, the gravity. Basically, we are used to an environment where the gravity is plus 1, plus 1 g is the gravitational force to which we are accustomed. What will happen if this uh, plus 1 g increases, becomes uh, more positive, plus 3 g, plus 4 g or what will happen if it becomes a negative g, negative gravitational force or zero gravity which is weightlessness. So let's try to understand this uh, short but interesting topic, the effects of uh, acceleration or g-forces. Let's see first the effect of positive g, more than plus 1 g. We are used to uh, living at plus 1 g, that's the gravitational force we are at and we are used to this. But what will happen if this force increases? or there is a more and more centrifugal force to which we are uh, exposed. So, positive G would mean head to foot direction, more force in a head to foot direction. So, what happens? There will be pooling of blood in the lower extremities. You know, even normally when we are at plus 1 G, uh, when we go in the standing posture from lying down where gravitational forces were not acting in a head to foot direction. So from the lying down posture when we go to the upright posture and the gravitational force acts like this from head to foot. This uh, is seen that the pooling of blood occurs in the lower extremities. So if the G forces have increased are increased further there will be more and more pooling of blood in the lower extremities and as a result of that the cardiac output will decrease because uh, venous return to the heart is going to decrease more and more blood has been pulled into the lower extremities so venous return to the heart will be less and less and you know cardiac output which is proportional to the venous return will also be less so as a result of these two effects there will be diminished cerebral blood flow. Less blood is flowing to the upper parts of the body and there would be a reduction in the cerebral blood flow. So the early warning sign of this is that there is reduced oxygen supply to the retina. And because of that, there is narrowing of the field of vision. Field of vision is narrowed. There would be loss of peripheral uh, field of vision and there is a loss of color perception. And this entire phenomenon has been called as grey out. Grey out. You, we already have heard about the blackout. Here would be a loss of color perception and uh, is, uh, then followed by the dizziness and fainting. So such phenomenon has been called as grey out. If the angular acceleration is more than plus 5g, then there would be a blackout. So, uh, complete loss of vision temporarily and followed by the fainting, dizziness and fainting. So, that would be a, uh, that, that's called as blackout, total loss of consciousness. And the degree of positive acceleration that one can withstand in the sitting position before the vertebral fracture occurs is about 20 g. Imagine uh, 20 g is, is, the, is a great force that is likely to cause 
fracture of the vertebral column. So uh, that's the, these are the effects of positive G, angular acceleration with positive G, the centrifugal uh, forces increasing and uh, G force acting on head to foot direction. The only important fact that you should understand is uh, decreased venous return to the heart, decreased cardiac output and blood pressure and therefore reduced cerebral blood flow. Now coming to the negative G, foot to head direction, negative gravitational force and foot to head direction, that kind of a force. Now what will happen is the effect will be opposite because blood moves towards head now. There is the cephalad, cephalad uh, movement of head, uh, movement of blood, I beg your pardon, movement of blood towards the head or cephalad movement of uh, blood. So what happens is rise in the cerebral arterial pressure, more and more blood is coming into the uh, cerebrum. So cerebral artery pressure would increase and uh, it may be followed even by rupture of the cerebral blood vessels. And what happens is, now this is interesting again, at minus 4 Gs, because blood has come more and more to the upper parts of the body and cerebral blood flow has increased, therefore cerebral vessels and retinal vessels get engorged with blood. There is a lot of blood, there is hyperemia in the retinal vessels and therefore it will give a sensation of redness because of that blood which has increased in the retinal region, it will give a sensation of redness and eventually uh, the, there may be a loss of consciousness as well. So such a thing is called as red out. So we saw for uh, positive Gs, there was grey out, loss of colour perception because of reduced oxygen supply to the retina and followed by the blackout. In the case of negative G, more blood and therefore those vessels uh, having excessive blood, hyperemia of the, uh, in the retinal vessels resulting in red out, red appearance and uh, followed by maybe loss of consciousness as well. So uh, that's the effect of negative G. Now let's see the effects of space flight or effects of weightlessness. You know, when a space flight starts and it has a certain velocity, gravitational pull is downward and the space flight uh, or the spacecraft is going in the opposite direction. So the two forces are going to cancel out each other and there's going to be a weightlessness. So it's generally called microgravity environment. Uh, they used to call it zero gravity environment, weightlessness. But there can't be zero gravity. So uh, instead of calling zero, they call it microgravity environment now. As I said, we are adapted to life at plus one Gs, uh, plus one G. And uh, if, uh, you know, uh, the circulatory adjustments are also for uh, plus one G, if there is no gravitational force, zero Gs, then again more and more blood will be pulled towards the thoracic vessels. It was the gravity which was causing uh, the pooling of blood in the lower extremities. Now it's not there, zero gravity, so more blood will be pulled into the thoracic vessels. So what happens is there is increase in the central blood volume, central veins and central vessels are filled with blood. And as the venous return to the heart is increasing, the preload on the heart increases. Preload on the heart increases. You know, venous return and the end diastolic volume is said to be the preload on the heart. That increases as the person faces zero gravity. Now, what happens is there will be increase in the filtration of plasma fluid in the interstitium in the facial region. Look, more blood is coming to the upper parts of the body and therefore what happens is the capillary hydrostatic pressure in this region, in the upper parts of the body and the facial region, this capillary hydrostatic pressure will increase 
and there will be leakage of fluid plasma water will leak out of the capillaries resulting in puffiness of the face edematous appearance of the face because of that leakage of plasma uh, fluid and uh, so therefore you will see a bloated facial appearance for the astronauts within 24 hours of the launch of the spacecraft. So uh, that's how the increased Venus return is going to affect the appearance as well, bloated facial appearance. Now because the Venus return to the heart is increasing and heart is filling with more amount of blood as there is no gravitational pull, the right atrium is filled with more blood and this stretching of that right atrial musculature would cause release of ANP, you know, atrial natriuretic peptide or atrial natriuretic factor. Now this will result in natriuresis and diuresis. I just repeat again, more blood coming to the right side of the heart so right atrium is filled with more amount of blood, stretching of the atrial muscle, there would be release of ANP by the myocytes of the right atrium. And this ANP goes to the kidney and it causes natriuresis, that is loss of sodium into the urine and diuresis, increased water output uh, into the urine, that uh, increased urine volume. So, circulatory blood volume will decrease by about 15%. That's the result of more and more blood coming in and filling in the atria, filling into the heart. Astronauts very often experience motion sickness. Now, this could be because of two reasons. A, there is weightlessness. So, you see, Normally, on earth, when we are in an upright post, uh, posture, the gravity is pulling our head and this constant pull of the head by the gravity stimulates the vestibular apparatus and this stimulation adjusts our body posture normally on earth. Now, suddenly as there is weightlessness situation in the spacecraft, this vestibular stimulation won't be there. There is no more gravitational pull pulling the head down and therefore altered stimulation of the vestibular apparatus. And the second reason also is that because there is a decrease in the ECF volume and uh, overall all the extracellular fluids including the endolymph in our semicircular canals in our vestibular apparatus, even that would be decreased to a certain extent and even that could be the reason for uh, the motion sickness felt by the astronauts. So, altered stimulation of the vestibular system resulting in a feeling of nausea and vomiting, uh, the motion sickness. Another thing that's uh, often observed is there is demineralization of bones. Uh, look, our musculoskeletal system is adjusted to this gravitational pull, to the gravitational force on earth. Now consider this, that there is no uh, gravitational pull or that force is no more acting. It's a weightlessness situation, 0G. It is going to affect our musculoskeletal system. How? Normally, our muscles are in a contracted state. They have a greater tension to maintain our posture in the wake of this pull by the gravity. The gravity is pulling us down and against that, the muscles need to contract and maintain their tone so as to maintain their posture, maintain the posture. If that is not there, then the musculoskeletal system is also likely to be affected. So what happens is, there is demineralization of the bones and uh, there is uh, increased urinary excretion of calcium. And the second thing is, there is loss of muscle tone. As I mentioned just now, muscles uh, do not have to face any resistance from the earth or that gravitational pull. So muscle tone is decreased and there is a loss of muscle mass and therefore aerobic capacity also, the capacity to perform physical activity or aerobic exercise, that too decreases with weightlessness. 
so and the reason i mentioned just now because there's no more gravity acting on the body therefore muscles need not contract uh, postural muscles particularly they don't have to contract continuously and therefore this is the result blood is pulled into the thoracic veins as we have already seen this and when the flight is over when the space flight is over blood pressure falls suddenly and the heart rate is doubled so when the uh, spacecraft is approaching the earth's orbit uh, the opposite effects are likely to happen and uh, therefore blood pressure suddenly is uh, decreased and heart rate is doubled reduced capacity to undertake exercise which is continued after 36 hours of the termination of the flight there is reduced aerobic capacity even after the flight is uh, space flight is over that continues for some time so these are the effects of various uh, types of gravitational forces on our body systems